Man, it's uh, 19 songs. Uh, it's basically uh, the Toby Mac and Diverse City Band live show, which is highly energetic and intense and, uh, you know, songs about life, man, songs about the struggle, songs about friendship, songs about faith in God. It's, it's all over the place. Are these uh, brand new songs? Uh, no, they're songs from my three releases. It's, so it's, it's basically the way we've sort of interpreted those songs live. Uh, taking f five or six songs from each record and and uh, sort of remixing them and doing them more band-like rather than studio-like. Is there anyone that sounds uh, that sounds I don't want to say like like extremely different, but but just different than the album version versus how you did it live? I mean, I can lit I can tell you that literally everyone does. Probably the older songs, the ones off my first two CDs sound more different because we kind of get bored with them <laughs> we're, we're artists so we're creative people on the road so we you know the newer songs will sort of do the album way because i think people expect that but as a song gets a little older you tend to start flipping it up a bit and, and making it sound different so the, the songs off the record momentum and diverse city tend to sound uh probably a little more remixed live um how um how intense is, is doing a live show for you? Uh, it's intense, man. Like, I mean, I leave, you know, I leave it all on the stage. I mean, I, I walk off that stage every night literally soaked. And you can see that in the DVD clearly. Um, just head to toe. I mean, my jeans are wet. My, my shirt is wet. My hat is wet. It's just soaked. So uh, I, I take out like four. I, I wear the same thing pretty much every night because I like consistency. <laughs> when I come up with the vibe for the stage, I want my band to look the same. So we have about three or four outfits of the same thing, constantly being dry cleaned and going through that stuff. So, man, we put it, we put it all out there. Is there any song that the audience usually cries out for that you, to do on stage? Is, is there one, like, fan favorite? I, I think right now uh, the beginning of our encore is a song called Made to Love. Um, and it's... It's probably my biggest song right now, uh, probably the biggest in my career to date, and it's it's on my current uh, release, um, Portable Sound. So it, it's it's like a mid-tempo, uh, kind of a reggae-influenced rock song, um, which is surprising because I'm typically known for a little more intensity, but uh, that song just kind of washed over me one day, and it's, it's just about my life and, and about my faith and about... Um, trying to stay consistent, try, trying to uh, stay the course. Okay. Now, um, what made you want to put this out on, on DVD? I've seen several uh, live shows on DVD, some very well. Some, it's kind of, it was like, well, you know. Well, I hope mine's whatever, not, but, I hope, you know, I, wh why the push? Well, I hope mine's not a, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, no, I actually, I got a shot close from it. I was very impressed. Oh, the thanks. energy, and that, that's usually the big thing. I could, that, that's usually it's what's, what's missing for me from one to another. It's how much energy can come off the screen. And when I was watching yours, I really was getting that enjoyment and, and you know, that sort of, gosh, I wish I was seeing this live. Oh, man, thank you. That's a big compliment. Um, I think that for me, it's like, people kept coming up to me even after the first record and they're like do you guys have a live DVD do you have a live CD I think they I think my band who I've been with for seven years I mean they're just they're just so funky and everyone on stage is a, is a bit of a character um, everyone's a little bit different we call it we call it the diverse city band because we're literally a diverse city um, and I think that people just kept coming up and asking me and I was like uh I'd like to have a few records out before I do a live DVD. So I, I thought, you know, three is enough. Three materials of 10 or 12 songs, and I can pull off of those and, and just do all the, the ones that people love. Do you still talk to your former uh, bandmates from uh, DC Talk? Of course, Michael and Kevin. Yeah, we're, we're friends. We, we text more than talk these days, I must admit. Uh, I think that's quite convenient um, to just hit them with a quick text. What's up? How's everything going? But... They're also out, you know, on their musical escapades, uh, you know, do, do, making their records. So um, everybody's doing great, man. Were you guys surprised by the success of DC Talk? Uh, yeah, I mean, who would, who would have ever guessed, you know, three college roommates, you know, messing around with music and, you know, you sell seven or eight million records, win four Grammys. It's nothing I expected when I started. I was just doing it because I wanted to, I wanted to uh, you know, play some play some parties on campus. 
Now, do you think the type of inspirational music that you're that you're doing now, especially when DC Talk was around, you know, the the influence was huge and it had a very strong following. Is that following still there? Has it lulled a bit, or is it stronger than ever? I think um, I think it's still quite strong. I mean, we still have bands out uh, doing co sort of what I call God rock. Uh, they're out there doing music about um, their faith, and they're filling up arenas, man. I mean, uh, I know Casting Crowns is out there doing that. You got bands like uh, Mercy Me, Reliant K, uh, Family Force 5. There's bands out there doing it big. I know we averaged on our last tour, I think, you know, four or 5,000. So it's, I think DC Talk, you know, we probably averaged five to 6,000 a night. So we're, we're not that far behind or at least my solo artistry is not that far behind it. I would never compare it to that because DC Talk was just a special moment in my life, you know, where I forged ground with my two friends. But at the same time, I'm forging new ground with my band Diverse City, and uh, and we're we're strictly climbing. We're not we're not camping yet, baby. You know, I I remember uh, seeing a documentary about the Beatles, and they talked about how kind of like just like a child or, or a family with brothers as they grow up and they get older they kind of want to venture out and do their own thing is that kind of what happened with just dc talk or you guys were just like you know it was like we just kind of need a break from each other to try our own thing no i mean i think that's exactly what happened i think you know michael and kevin are very creative people um and they probably didn't feel extremely fulfilled in the dc talk setting i mean i wrote most all the songs and produced the songs with a guy named mark heimerman um, and I know Michael and Kevin had, had a lot of songs in their hearts that just didn't sort of match the DC Talk style, and they were, they were probably the first ones to say that. So they had a desire to, to, to reach out. I, I, on the other hand, was quite content, but um, when I looked up after about a year of signing artists to my record label, Goatee, uh, Reliant K and Jennifer Knapp and Sonic Flood and Grits and Out of Eden, you know, these are bands that I signed, and I was working with those bands, but... I just sort of missed hip hop for me, and DC Talk kind of slowly evolved and moved away from hip hop. So man, I wanted to jump in head first back into hip hop, um, and that's what I did. Cool. Now you mentioned Reliant K earlier, and I have to say I do I, I love one of their songs. It's a cover of Charles in Charge. <laughs> I don't know what about it I love, but it, it, I, I just love listening to it. During these live shows, do you get to do a cover of, of songs that, that you've loved or, or that, that you grew up with that you enjoyed uh, listening to? I do, I do. Uh, I go back to uh, the, the, the era of disco um, and pull from that era. And we do, like, uh, play that funky music, White Boy. We do pieces of uh, We Are Family and uh, what else is in there? Um, Good Times. I mean, we, do, we just do this sort of remix of a, a potpourri of a bunch of like uh, these seventies disco courses, and I mean the crowd just eats it up, man. I mean they they just they're dancing from the bottom and the floor to the top of the arena. Is is there one song of yours that is very close to you? The audience may not like it all the time, but to you, it, it's your song. It's your song that you find needs more appreciation. That's a good question, Avi. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. Um, I bet I think probably the song Irene uh, is really dear to me. It's it's it was one of the songs on my first record. It's sort of um, this song that's reaching out to this girl that's made some mistakes, but uh, letting her know that uh, the father still got her in his arms and he's still thinking about her. Um, and it's I love the mix of it's it's sort of like reggae meets hip hop, which I just love. And it's it's laid back for my audience. Um, so, you know, they they want the slam or booming or something like that. And this is sort of a laid back song, but has a hot beat. 